an important notion <coughs> which is the notion of a local maximum and local minimum for a function which is what i'm going to briefly communicate and will last i do not know how long but i'll stop as soon as i feel that uh, you know i'm buckling so but then let me get you started at least with the notion of a local maximum and a local minimum so <coughs> local maximum local minimum <coughs> now <coughs> say if there is a function like this this is a point p x coordinate a y coordinate f a this is a point on the graph of the function right <coughs> now in this case in a small neighborhood surrounding x equal to a for any x in this neighborhood <coughs> for any x in this neighborhood you select an x here this will be my fx or you could have selected an x here and that would be my fx you find that f of x is less than f of a there is a neighborhood surrounding x equal to a a very small neighborhood surrounding x equal to a in which for any x in this neighborhood the value of the function at a is larger than all other values that the function attains in the immediate proximity of x equal to a all the ordinates surrounding x equal to a will be smaller than the ordinates at x equal to a a local goon at x equal to a you find a local goon a local dada it does not matter you know what's happening way beyond a but very very close to a he's like a pada ka dada he enjoys the supreme value fa larger than the value that the function assumes at any x in the neighborhood of x equal to a if that happens if that happens if that local goon concept prevails at a then the function is said to have a local maximum at x equal to a function is then said to have a local maximum at x equal to a that means compared to its neighborhood on either side of a it has the greatest value at a then the function is said to have a local maximum at x equal to a right <coughs> so in this case do you realize that fa is larger than all other fx's that appear in the immediate proximity of x equal to a the function therefore falls within the category of a local maximum at x equal to a right <coughs> similarly huh the greatest value no no that's no that has not that is actually largest at every point max of fx and gx is for every given x i select the one which is larger so that has nothing to do with this really right <coughs> similarly
this point is P A comma F A. <coughs> P A comma F A. Right? Again, this is a case in which <coughs> for any x in the immediate neighborhood of x equal to a, this is f a, this is f a, this is x, this is f x, f x will be larger than f a, <coughs> right, f x will be larger than f a, that means of all the ordinates in the neighborhood of x equal to a, f a is the smallest ordinate, f a is the smallest ordinate right so if that happens then the function is said to have a local minimum at x equal to a the function is then said to have a local minimum at x equal to a right it's not the smallest value of the function but it's the smallest in the small enough neighborhood surrounding x equal to a it's the smallest and it is said to have a local minimum at x equal to a clear <coughs> say Say I have a function y equal to fx which is mod x when x is not 0 and is plus 1 when x is 0. Suppose I have a function y equal to fx equal to mod x when x is not 0 but is plus 1 when x is 0. Let me draw the graph of this function. Let me draw the graph of this function and examine x equal to 0. So, except x equal to 0, it goes as y equal to mod x, right? At x equal to 0, it becomes equal to 1. At x equal to 0, y becomes equal to 1. This is a point on the graph of the function. Right? Now, what does the function have at x equal to 0? It has a local maximum. It has a local maximum at x equal to 0. Do you realize that? It has a local maximum at x equal to 0. Right? Hmm? <coughs> suppose I say this is minus 1 same look but at x equal to 0 the function has a value equal to minus 1 that means this then p x is 0 y is minus 1 is a point on the graph of the function then what does it have at x equal to 0 a local minimum right it has a local minimum at x equal to 0 so this for this look a local minimum at x equal to 0 no 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 in this case there is no interval it's at a point local maximum at that point local minimum at that point only not for an interval the function doesn't have a local maximum throughout an interval or a local minimum throughout an interval it is at a point only right local means local means local right okay yes i mean if a function has okay I am so sorry, I, I should hold my responsible for you to ask me a question like this, but if a func function is either increasing or it is decreasing, if it is neither increasing nor decreasing, it is something like this, in which case at this point at x equal to 0, it has a local minimum, it is neither increasing nor 
decreasing at a local maximum it's neither increasing nor decreasing so the it's a new concept now so if a function has a local maximum or a local minimum at a point it is neither increasing nor decreasing at that point if a function has a local maximum or a local minimum at a point it is neither increasing nor decreasing at that point <coughs> Hmm? Small enough neighborhood, no matter how small that choice of neighborhood. Her question is, how long can the neighborhood be? As small as one could imagine. If one can find a small enough neighborhood, no matter how small that is, you don't go large. You have to go as small as possible. If you can find a small enough neighborhood, very, very small neighborhood, let's say 10 to power minus 50 here and 10 to power minus 50 there, or 10 to power minus 5000 and 10 to power minus 5000 on either side of x equal to 0 and you find that at x equal to 0 it has the greatest value compared to the neighborhood or the smallest value compared to the neighborhood then a case of local maximum or local minimum there is nothing like a greatest what's the size of the neighborhood it it can be made as small as you like that is the only important thing it has to be made as small as possible and in that small enough neighborhood these conditions should be met uh, if a function has a local maximum or a local minimum at a point it is neither increasing nor decreasing at that point no because around x equal to a that strictly increasing decreasing behavior is not observed you mean oh okay you mean a function like this at x equal to 0 it has a value say 1 then very clearly in a in an immediate neighborhood around it has a local maximum at x equal to 0 because in the immediate neighborhood around x equal to 0 the function has its greatest value has its greatest value so it's a local maximum at x equal to 0 you're right no it's not increasing it's not increasing it's not increasing it's not increasing if it has a local maximum or a local minimum it's not increasing these are complementary behaviors these have they are not a function can't be simultaneously local maximum and increasing or decreasing or a local minimum and increasing or decreasing if a certain to be a local maximum or local minimum then no no if it's constant in an interval then uh, it's not like a local dad in that interval it has its peers in that interval. If it has its peers in a small enough interval surrounding it, then it has no local maximum or local minimum. It has to be singular. It has to be the only dad in the interval. That is the only important thing. Yeah, it need not be differentiable. No, not necessarily. It could be. <laughs> I will give me a few minutes. I am going to build it up for you. He's saying if if there is a it's just that I have deliberately uh, gone general in causing the function to not look continuous at that point doesn't mean that the function is I'm again you know I apologize for leading you into those portals where you are forced to believe that a function has to be discontinuous for it to have a local max huh अरे बाबा continuous ही नहीं है तो ससुरा differentiable कहाँ से होगा I'll let me let me build it up. Yeah, give me a few minutes. Chances are that you know you're pre you're preempting a few things. Just give me a few minutes. You'll understand. Differentiability is is secondary. The concept is first. Whether differentiable or not is is really secondary, right? Say, if I have a function y equal to fx, <coughs> say mod of x squared minus 2x. Hmm. 
First of all, let me draw the graph of x squared minus 2x. It's an upward opening parabola. with roots 0 and 2. <coughs> this is an upward opening parabola, right? At x equal to 1, it assumes. Okay, now this one, do you realize that at x equal to 1, it has a local minimum? It has a local minimum at x equal to 1? Because on either side of x equal to 1, the value at 1 is smaller compared to the values that it attains in its immediate neighborhood around x equal to 1. So it has a local minimum at x equal to 1. <coughs> and by the way, so you <laughs> differentiable, right? At x, it has a local minimum at x equal to 1. It is differentiable. Huh? Not more. Not monotonous, not monotonous. Now let me look at the graph of y equal to mod of x squared minus 2x. Again, if you recall, the way I have been drawing these graphs, if you took the modulus, this is what happens. At x equal to 1, now it has a local maximum. At x equal to 0, it has a local minimum. At x equal to 2, it has a local minimum, yes or no? So, 0 and 2 are local minimas, whereas <coughs> x equal to 1 is a local maximum of this function. Do you realize that? Hmm? Whereas this one at x equal to 0 had a decreasing trend. At x equal to 2, it was increasing, monotonically increasing. At x equal to 1, it was neither increasing nor decreasing. It was a local minimum. <coughs> This one at x equal to 0 and 2. Hmm? Monoto if I say monotonically increasing, there is no loss of generality here. And at a given point, we do not say strictly or monotonically, we simply say it is increasing, right? At x equal to 0, 2, it has a local minimum, whereas at x equal to 1, this has a local maximum. At this point, huh? dy dx is 2 into x minus 1. At x equal to 1, does dy dx exist? Huh? Yeah, it does. <laughs> huh? So it is differentiable. It is a polynomial function. It will be differentiable everywhere. Is not it? A polynomial will be differentiable continuous everywhere. This is a polynomial. Huh? Tangents have two slopes. No, my friend. The tangent has only one slope. This is the tangent. This is the only slope. This is the left hand tangent. This is the tangent to the left of 1. This is the tangent to the right of 1. But the tangent at 1 is this only. Right? <coughs> Got me? Hmm? Now, See, by looking at the graph of a function, by looking at the graph of a function, one can obtain whether a function has a <coughs> local maximum, local minimum at a point or not, right? So, and in this context, I never even mentioned whether a function is differentiable at that point or not, or even whether even if it is continuous or not, because see, I started by drawing all weird looking graphs those were discontinuous and therefore not differentiable because the concept was that you know the concept of local maximum and local minimum are not dependent on whether a function is differentiable or continuous or not right it was only about how the function behaves vis-a-vis -vis its neighborhood that was the whole idea of uh, local maxima or local minima now suppose a function is differentiable at a given point suppose a function is 
differentiable at a given point. <laughs> Say F dash T exists. Say F double dash t also exists. Say the function is differentiable once and twice at x equal to a. Okay. And say it has a local maximum at x equal to a. Say it has a local maximum at x equal to a. <coughs> okay, at x equal to a, the function has a local maximum. If a function has a local maximum at x equal to a and if it is differentiable, <coughs> then one of the requirements is one of the necessary conditions for the function to have a local maximum if it is differentiable. If it is not differentiable, then we look at the graph and suggest whether it has a local maximum or not. But if it is differentiable at x equal to a, if it is differentiable at x equal to a, one of the necessary conditions for it to have a local maximum or a local minimum is that f dash t must be 0, f dash t must be 0. Necessary condition. But like I told you, the derivative at a given point could be 0 and the function could still be increasing or decreasing at that point, right? Remember that? Because if in the neighborhood I find f dash x is greater than 0 and then despite f dash a being 0, the function will be an increasing function at x equal to a. So, f dash a equal to 0 is only a necessary requirement for a differentiable function to be, to, to be having a local maximum say at x equal to a. Now, <coughs> look at there is look at an x to the left of a this is an x to the left of a do you realize that f dash x is positive to the left of a when x is slightly less than a f dash x is positive yes or no the tangents to the left of a make an acute angle with the positive direction of the x axis Whereas, look at an x to the right of a, f dash x will be negative to the right of a, when x is slightly to the right of a, f dash x is negative, yes or no? <coughs> hmm? So, which means, if a function has a local maximum at x equal to a, if a function has a local maximum at x equal to a, then, <coughs> then the derivative, first derivative to the immediate left of a must be positive, the first derivative to the immediate right of a must be negative, at x equal to a it must be 0. That means the first derivative changes from positive to 0 to negative values in its passage through x equal to a. If that, you understand what I am saying? If a function has a local maximum at x equal to a, then 1, f dash t must be 0. The tangent at x equal to a must be parallel to the x axis. 2, to the immediate left of x equal to a, f dash x must be positive. To the immediate right of x equal to a, f dash x must be negative. Immediate right of a. Yes. 
yes yes yeah i'm exactly you right yeah so one thing <coughs> if a function has a zero derivative at x equal to a two to the immediate left of a its derivative is positive to the immediate right of a its derivative is negative then the function is said to have a local maximum at x equal to a <coughs> this is the second requirement these two put together means the function has a local maximum at x equal to a Also in the process, do you realize that f dash x is an increasing function of a is decreasing? f dash x changes from positive to zero to negative values around x equal to a. f dash x must be decreasing, yes or no? So, <coughs> clearly. in the neighborhood of x equal to a migrate from left left of x equal to a to right of x equal to a f dash x decreases f dash x decreases right from positive to 0 to negative values that means in this neighborhood around x equal to a f dash x is a decreasing function of x f dash x is a decreasing function of x if f dash x is a decreasing function of x its derivative must be negative if f dash x decreases that means its derivative must be negative in this entire neighborhood right that means f double dash x must be less than 0 in the entire neighborhood around x equal to a in the entire neighborhood around x equal to a f double dash x must be less than 0 that means specially at x equal to a also this is the entire neighborhood around x equal to a so at a also this must be true at a also this must be true so this must be f double dash a less than 0 f double dash a less than 0 that means <coughs> if f dash a is 0 and if f double dash a is less than 0 then the function must have a local maximum at x equal to a if f dash a is 0 and f double dash a is less than 0 then the function must have a local maximum at x equal to a No, it means tangents are decreasing. Slope of the tangent is decreasing. It can be decreasing no. Slope of the tangent. It has nothing to do with the value of the function. It is only the slope of the tangent. No, it cannot be. It cannot be. It cannot be. It only f double dash x less than 0 means f dash x decreases. That's all. f dash x decreases means its derivative must be negative that's all nothing can be said about the value of the function at all all that it means is that the slope of the tangent decreases nothing else if f double dash x less than zero means f dash x is a decreasing function of x slope of the tangent is decreasing nothing else can be said about that so in any case there are two things that you must bear in mind if you want to test the function for a local maximum at x equal to a this is a necessary condition this is necessary this is a necessary condition and the second one can be a sufficient condition examine f dash x to the left of a examine f dash x to the right of a to the immediate left of a if f dash x greater than 0 to the immediate right of a if f dash x less than 0 then these two put together will give you the, ne the necessary and sufficient condition for a local maximum at x equal to a either you can test these two for a local maximum or what you could do is in addition to one if f dash a is found to be zero and if f double dash a that means one f dash a is found to be zero two if f double dash a is found to be less than zero 
second derivative at x equal to a is less than zero, then also it's a case of a local maximum at x equal to a. Then also it's a case of a local maximum. So this is called the first derivative test for a local maximum. This is called the second derivative test for a local maximum. However, what I can tell you is it is possible that f double dash t becomes equal to zero. If f double dash t becomes equal to zero, there are other tests that we perform, but let's go one at a time, simple steps and simple stages, right? If f double dash t is less than zero, with f dash t equal to zero, it must be a case of a local maximum at x equal to a, right? <laughs> so sometimes when differentiating the second time becomes horrendous, we look at the first derivative confirmatory test towards a local maximum. That means we look at the sign of the first derivative in the neighborhood of x equal to a. If the sign of the first derivative changes from positive to negative values, when you go from the left of a to the right of a, the function must have a local maximum at x equal to a, right? If it's easy to differentiate the function a second time, then might as well differentiate a second time and put x equal to a. And if you find that if f double dash t is less than zero, the function must have a local maximum at x equal to a, clear? <coughs> Similarly, the idea for a local minimum is exactly the same. <laughs> local minimum for a function in wi which is differentiable twice at x equal to a. Again, if it has a local minimum at x equal to a, f dash t must be 0. That's a necessary condition. f dash t must be 0. This is a necessary condition. Again, look at x to the left of a f dash x is less than 0 to the left of a isn't it f dash x is less than 0 to the left of a f dash x is greater than 0 to the right of a do you see that so, if it is a case of local minimum, to the immediate left of a, f dash x is negative, to the immediate right of a, f dash x is positive, right? So, if this is necessary, then the second, which is the sufficient condition, <coughs> is f dash x less than 0, when x is slightly less than a, f dash x greater than 0, if x is slightly greater than a. To the immediate left of a, f dash x must be negative. To the immediate right of a, f dash x must be positive. At a, f dash x must be 0. If this, this happens, then this would be a first derivative confirmatory test for a local minimum. This is the first derivative confirmatory test towards a local minimum. Right? Now, <coughs> A substitute for 2 what is happening to f dash x increasing f dash x is an increasing function of x <coughs> so its derivative must be positive That means in the entire neighborhood of x equal to a, f double dash x must be positive. That means at x equal to a, f double dash x must be positive, right? <coughs> so, 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 so
generally that is what we look at we we define local maxima local minima differently if we are examining the end points of an interval right so this is local maxima local minimum uh, in general with respect to a neighborhood on either side of a right <coughs> so if the second derivative at a is positive and the first derivative is zero then the function has a local minimum at x equal to a or if the first derivative is 0 and this is the change of sign of the first derivative in the neighborhood of x equal to a then the function has a local minimum. So either you perform this test the first derivative confirmatory test or the second derivative confirmatory test towards a local minimum. Good throw.